Hey gang, Four Eyed Piper coming at you. I've got kind of a serious video to make, and I have to be honest, I wasn't sure I was going to do this. Uh, I'm still not sure I'm going to post it, but we'll see if it goes up. Uh, a lot of nonsense going on right now that I wanted to comment on, and uh, well, first, uh, what I'm smoking. I just lit up a bowl of the final uh, home blending component that I have yet to try straight, and that is some Peter Stokeby's Black Latakia. Straight. Just had the charring light. Yeah. I will say I'm not really a big Latakia lover. I would say I'm a Latakia tolerator. <laughs> I do enjoy some Latakia blends, Northwoods, Plum Pudding, some of the unicorn blends that we all could probably name, and I'm not going to. Uh, but most of the time, uh, most of the time, I'm smoking Latakia blends, and I don't taste anything but Latakia. It's a, uh, it goes a little one note for me. It's, it's kind of overwhelming to my palate. punctuated by the shrill sounds of the train. Anyway, um, serious stuff uh, that we got to talk about. And uh, again, wasn't sure I was going to do this. And I'm not quite sure how, uh, how to comment on this, to be honest with you. I'm at a loss. And I think the best way um, is to tell you a story from my childhood. Um, when I was a kid, uh, my grandfather was a legend. He was a sheriff. He was a bodybuilder and a boxer. Uh, people still tell stories about this guy, and he, he passed away in the 90s. Uh, he was a legend. He really was. Uh, I looked up to him immensely and, and uh, spent a lot of time with him, as much as I could, until he passed away. And he was in his 60s when he passed. Um, One day, uh, and he, like I said, he was a sheriff, um, I asked him if I could ride along with him. And uh, I was young, I was probably nine or 10. Um, and he allowed me and you know, we were going around town and just he was talking about the job and blah, blah, blah. Talking about this and that to a nine, 10 year old and you know, whatever. Uh, and he got a call and there was a, a bar fight going on. Um, down at this kind of rowdy biker bar that used to be in in the hometown where I grew up grew up and uh, you could tell he was torn between the fact that he had to go because it was a small town there weren't that many people to respond and the fact that I was in a car and finally he decided that he was gonna go but he parked way way down the road from this bar um, so that nobody could get near the car where I was he told me to sit tight and that he would be right back uh, so I watched for a little bit, nothing was happening, everything was inside, and then, you know, maybe 20, 30 minutes later, after I had basically gone to sleep, um, I saw people start coming out of the bar. And uh, you could tell that something was going down, big time. There were people all over the place. My grandfather was out there barking at folks to get them out, uh, get them on, into their vehicles, get out of there, blah, 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 breaking things up. And uh, this guy and his girlfriend uh, came out and started shouting at my grandfather. And now I couldn't hear what they were saying, but I could tell it was pretty intense. And uh, the guy came up and started looking like he was going to be swinging at him. So uh, my grandfather, being the brute that he was, literally, and this was, you know, this was back in the day, clocked him in the face, knocked him out cold, uh, into the dirt, uh, laid him right out. And uh, the guy's girlfriend just freaked out. She jumped on my grandfather's back, and he swung her around a couple times and then flipped her over his head onto the hood of a car uh, and cuffed her. And I remember just thinking, man, he is such a badass. Of course, I was, you know, all jazzed up about it because I wanted to see some action. Well, once the dust had settled, it took a little bit. Uh, more cops came, got everything broken up. Uh, the two idiots got put into squad cars and taken downtown, whatever they say. And uh, my grandfather dusted himself off and came down to the car. And he, uh, you know, collapsed into, into the front seat 
and uh, sat there for a second and uh, let out a big sigh, probably contemplating what the hell he was going to say to me because uh, as a 10-year-old, I had just witnessed him uh, take care of business in a big way. And he turned around to me, looked me square in the eye, got real close to my face. And he said, I want you to remember one thing. Don't feed the trolls. And I've lived that, by that uh, mantra my whole life, since that day. That never happened. And uh, there's a lot of nonsense going on. And uh, people looking for response to their whatever, whatever they're putting out there. And the only way that they win is if you respond to it. So don't comment. Don't make videos. Don't do all the nonsense. Uh, don't feed into it because that's the only way that it uh, gains steam. And uh, that's how I deal with trolls in my lives. We just ignore them and they go away. And that's just the way the YTPC works. 99% of folks are here because they want to enjoy their pipe. Full of straight Latakia. And uh, enjoy their time. And uh, have fun doing it. Which is, that's what I'm doing. And I want you to remember that after I'm dead. Don't feed the trolls. See you next time.